if a veteran walks in your office with they're in their they're in their golden year, you know, what what does that mean to how do you see that situation as a VSL? So uh, the way that I always approached this one, it's a it's a special time because you're still not only the aspects of filing the claim, but there's also the back pay. It's almost like you have an intent to file in place, essentially. Yeah. So anything that you file within that first year will back pay to the day after you got out of the military. So so you have that in place too. So it's just kind of another extra special thing that's in place for you. So if you showed up eight months after you got out, well, you have eight months worth of back pay already in the bank if we file your claim within the 12 month period. And yes, you're right. There's a presumptive period, meaning that uh, it removes the need for the nexus for a, a good handful of conditions, there are probably like 40 conditions or something uh, listed in the title 38 under the 3.309 alpha. It's a, it's a list. And for the most part, it's going to be things that are more disease type stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Those types of ailments, not, not physical injuries. So the, like the car analogy is pretty good, right? Like you're not going to uh, get in a car accident six months after I got out and go, oh yeah, man, my neck's really bad, you know, bad, you know, it was probably from the car accident, sorry. So they don't open that window up for you for that. Um, my suggestion is it's twofold as far as like what to file within that one year period. One, absolutely, you must file. Like you, like we have to file within one year for everything that, that you want to file for. Yes. Some of those things might get nexus, uh, uh, or get the presumptive designation. So you don't need to prove the nexus. However, I'm a fan of overdoing it. <laughs> so I'm a fan of, look, take this literature talking about one year presumptives and some of the language here from the VA's website to your doctor, show them, let them write you a nexus letter with a little more comfort, right? That the VA does kind of allow this. So you give them something to kind of work with uh, and add a nexus letter. Why not? Right now, all of a sudden you are providing a nexus. You're, you're treating it like a non-presumptive. You're giving yourself an extra edge. Uh, let them say no, right? The answer is always no, if you don't ask. So don't just, if it's not on the list, of presumptive conditions for within one year, does that mean don't file it? No, that means still file it, right? And let's just get you a nexus. If if there is, if it is on the list and it requires, um, and it doesn't require a nexus because it's a presumptive, and you've already been to the doctor and you have all this information and the doctor wrote you a letter, cool, I'm gonna supply that too, why not? If the end goal is to try to get you service connected at the highest percentage that we possibly can. So mm -hmm. evidence that's for you, and we've talked about this before, Clay, it's either for you or against you. So every extra piece of evidence that you supply for you is going to combat anything against you. So I've always kind of been that way that, look, if your doctor's, you know, oh, it's been my family's 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 forever doctor, right? And super nice, great people, blah, blah, blah. They'll write me 40,000 letters if I want, you know, great. Let's just do it, right? So it's kind of circumstance. Um, and, and again, at the end of the day, <clears throat> my viewpoint is file for everything. If they deny you, well, now you got more time to work on it because now we get to turn around and work a supplemental if we need to, right? Yeah. Um, so even if it's not on the list, I would throw it in there with or without nexus information uh, within the one year period, because again, you're preserving that effective date and um, potentially effective dates are kind of funny because it could be based on your diagnosis, that type of stuff, depending on all. So there's some nuance again there, but for the most part, my rule of thumb just to cap, uh, put it in a little capsule here, is submit everything that you want to file for, file for it within the time frame allotted, in this case, a one-year period. If it's not on the list, I'm still filing for it with or without evidence. And then if they deny it, then I'm going to work beyond that with a supplemental claim. I mean, that's that's really the, the uh, but it's also setting expectations. So as a VSO, it's setting the expectation to the veteran that, hey, look, there's a chance that one's going to get denied, but these other two that are on the presumptive list, you're golden, 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have hypertension, you have proof that you were taking medication uh, beforehand, uh, you're good to go. That should be on, that's on the list and you can fight that all day long because it's directly there. So uh, that would be kind of my take on it, Clay. Oh yeah. And one thing I do want to hit on because we are obviously focused on VA disability, but for those service members or you're still within that close window of transitioning, VA disability is one little piece of the pie. You, I would recommend one of anyone getting out of the military is have a plan. That's probably the number one recommendation, right? I'm talking, where are you going to live, job stuff, if you have a family, all of that jazz. Now we're focusing in on VA benefits, but a part of that is healthcare, VA healthcare. You can enroll in healthcare. I highly recommend you do that. So that way, when you do get out, you meet your healthcare team. So my healthcare team at DC, I'm on the red team in Washington, DC. And I saw my primary care probably like four or five months after I got out. So it took, it took a while to establish uh, my relationship with VA healthcare. Is it right? No, but it's going to take a while. So you might as well just do it. You can do it online. It's extremely easy. And groping that back to VA or VA the disability benefits, just like Jason said, hey, if this is denied, you're going to have to combat that with sub with a submittal claim. Well, with a submittal claim, you have to submit new and relevant evidence. And the VA healthcare, it's depending on what your rating is and what your situation is, it's more than likely going to be free. And then you can go ahead and gather your evidence. And when I say free, I mean 50% or higher, or that, con that condition is service connected. But that is medical evidence it's current medical evidence and so it's all it's kind of like a you can't do one without the other now do you need VA healthcare no I, I understand if you're in you know rural Arkansas that might not be an option and so you still have the option to go to private uh your private insurance your spouse's insurance whatever, whatever that picture looks like for you but that is still evidence as well you just have to upload your private records with your VA claim or give the VA permission, which I don't recommend, give the VA permission to your healthcare records. I prefer to just hand, hand pick, hand select the evidence I'm giving to the VA. Did that spark any thoughts or do you want to move on to everyone else? And that's probably the majority of the audience here. Yeah, let's move on to everyone else. See what, okay. See where this goes. Yeah, so if you're been if you've been out for one year and one day all the way up to forty years and plus, uh, welcome to everyone else. Okay, <laughs> that's where we're at, and all the stuff you see on YouTube about denials and higher level reviews and supplemental claims and you need a nexus. Should I pay for a company? Should I use a VSO? When do I get an attorney? That's where we're at. All right, well, welcome to the world. Um, if you don't know, you're already there. And this, in my opinion, is when an evidence-based claim really comes into play. The longer, this is my opinion, you're not going to find this in 38 CFR, but the longer you've been out, the more necessary that evidence-based claim becomes. And so the issue is, okay, well, I don't have an in-service event, which is one of the big three. In-service event, current diagnosis. Current diagnosis relatively speaking, is easy to get, assuming you have the condition, right? Go talk to your healthcare team, get some medication. The VA will give you a treatment code. They're not going to give you a formal diagnosis, but that's the same for VA rating purposes. That's that's generally easy. What about the in-service offense? That is the hurdle that most veterans find themselves jumping over. So my question to you, Jason, and it is, it is definitely open-ended. There's many, many right answers and many, many wrong answers, but if a veteran has absolutely zero medical evidence, how would a veteran prove the in-service event, which is needed? That time in service, that in-service event is needed for every single claim, every single initial claim. Um, 